So we were going through the uh, the Chatur Shloki Gita, and uh, what I would request is like last time. Um, like to begin with the verses again so that they're fresh in the memory uh, and we refresh ourselves with uh, what the verses were, were and then again uh, dive in deep with uh, Srila Param Guru Maharaj's uh, uh, deep commentary. So is that okay? Is that agreeable? Okay. So yeah, I'm, but with great comment, yeah. Excellent. So I'm going to uh, start now. Here we go. And please, everyone else, um, if you can chant with us, I'll say a line. And then if you can uh, follow along, that would be wonderful. Uh, again, bowing down at the lotus feet of His Divine Grace, Om Vishnupad, Srila Bhakti Sundar Govind Dev Goswami Maharaj, um, asking for His... Uh, for his blessings as uh, we are approaching Param Guru Maharaj uh, and his Dibbiwani. Bande Sri Guru Gaurango Radha Govinda Sundarao Bande Guru Gaurango Radha Govinda Sundarao Saganao Giyate Chath Gita Gurartha Gauravam Saganao Giyate Saganao Gita Chath Bande Sri Guru Gaurango Radha Govind Sundaro Bande Sri Guru Gaurango Radha Govind Sundaro Sagano Giate Chat Gita Gudartha Gauravam Sagano Giate Chat Gita Gudartha Gauravam Arun Prabhu translation Bowing down to the holy feet of Sri Guru, Sri Gorang, and Sri Sri Radha Govind Sundar, all accompanied by their associates, I sing the glories of the hidden treasure of Sri Mad Bhagavad Gita. Jai. Aham Sarvasya Prabhava Matta Sarvam Pravartate. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarva Pravartate Iti Matva Bhajante Maam Buddha Bhava Samanvita Iti Matva Bhajante Maam Buddha Bhava Samanvita Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarvam Pravartate Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarva Pravartate Iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvita. Iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvita. Translation, Arun Prabhu. Oh. I am Krishna, the sweet absolute, the origin of all. The entire universe of material and transcendental play, activity, purpose, and the Vedas and allied scriptures which give guidance all evolve from me alone. Realizing this hidden treasure, persons of fine theistic intelligence surpass the mundane and embrace the path of love divine, Radmar, and adore me forever. So the next verse is Machitta Madgat Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam. Machitta Madgat Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam. Katyanta Shama Manityam Tushanticha Ramanticha. Machitta Madgat Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam Machitta Madgat Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam Katyanta Shama Manityam Tushanticha Ramanticha Ramanticha All 
always thinking of me, those surrendered souls converse about me, enlightening one another with the nectar of their devotional realizations, ever content and ecstatic in their divine natures. Tesham Satat Yuktanam Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam Tesham Satat Yuktanam Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tamyena Mama Payantite Dadami Buddhi Yogam Yam Yena Mama Payantite Tesham Satat Yuktanam Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam Tesham Satat Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tamyena Mama Payantite Dadami Buddhi Yogam Yam Yena Mama Payantite To those devotees who are always lovingly engaged in my service, I give the divine inspiration by which they can come to me. Tesham Evanu Kampartham Maham Magyana Jamtama Let me get to the worst of the sisters. Tesham Evanu Kampartham Mamagyanam Jamtama Nāśāmyātma bhāvasthau jñāna dīpe na bhāsvata Nāśāmyātma bhāvasthau jñāna dīpe na bhāsvata Tēśāme vānu kampārtham aham magyāna jamtama Tēśāme vānu kampam aham magyāna jamtama Nāśāmyātma bhāvasthau jñāna dīpe na bhāsvata Nasham Atma Bhavasto Yanadi Pena Bhaswata Out of compassion for them, I situated within the hearts of all living beings, dispel the darkness of ignorance with the radiance of knowledge. Or, the meaning is, being conquered by the love of those devotees who in their unalloyed loving devotion become afflicted by the all-devouring darkness born of their pangs of separation from me, I illuminate their hearts with my presence, destroying the darkness of their pain of separation. Joy. So that was the four verses, Chatu Shloki. And uh, we will pick up from where we left off last time. I'll just uh, read uh, the last paragraph. And those who missed last time, I would encourage you to go back to last week's uh, broadcast recording. It's recorded live. It's available so you can see that to be in continuation. So... This is Param Guru Maharaj, and I'm just uh, reading the last part from, uh, just the last paragraph from last time. Every movement begins from me, even my own worship. My own service is begun by me in my role as Guru. I reveal that to the public so that you will properly worship me. For this reason, Guru is called a Bhagavan, for he is non-different from me. Acharyam Mama Vijaniyan. The finest potency of Bhagavan is Radharani. So Guru, in the highest sense, as well as service in the highest sense, is represented in Srimati Radharani. Next, Krishna says, Those who know this will worship me. Iti matva bhajantemam. 
those who understand this conception that Radharani serves him in the highest way will serve Krishna in subjugation to her. This is Radha Dasyam, the divine service of Sri Radha. And it is with this understanding that a worshipper will come to worship Krishna. In my interpretation, I have taken it that this is Krishna's intent when he says, Iti matva bhajante maam. Knowing this, they worship me. He means, those who know that my worship comes from me and that my finest potency worships me best will worship me under the direction of my finest potency. Here, we find the importance of Radha Dasyam, the service of Sri Radha, the greatest goal of the followers of Rupa Goswami, the Rupanuga Gaudiya Sampradaya. Here, Krishna is saying, knowing that it is my finest potency that worships me best, one will worship me under the direction of my first class worshipper, Sri Radha. With this idea, one will always worship me under the guidance of my finest Shakti, Srimati Radharani, or her representation, Sri Gurudev. In this way, they will always worship me under their direction and never as a direct worshipper. This is the meaning of iti matva bhajante maam. Then Krishna says, buddha bhav samanvita. Here, buddha means those of fine theistic intelligence. Sumedhasa. In Bhagavatam, it is said that those of fine theistic intelligence or fine theistic intellect will be able to appreciate this. Yajantihi sumedasa. Fine theistic intelligence is the outcome of good fortune which comes from above, Sukriti. It is not self-acquired. That fine intellectual inner direction and guidance can only come from the nirgun or transcendental plane. Buddha here means one who has a direct connection with the nirguna or transcendental plane. His intelligence doesn't come from this mic quarter. Rather, it springs from the spiritual platform. Only such a person can appreciate these subtle points. This is said in Bhagavatam. Krishna Varanam Tusha Krishnam Sangopangasta Parshadam Jagya Sankitana Prayera Yajanti Sumedasa. Those who are of fine theistic intelligence, Sumedasa, will worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Sankirtan, not others. So this verse from Bhagavad Gita means. One whose devotion is the product of the Nirgun wave, whose faith is not collected from this world of misunderstanding, shall worship me through Radha Dasyam. Here, Bhav Samanvita means Rag Samanvita. I'll repeat that. Here, Rag Bhav Samanvita means Rag Samanvita. Namaskar Anilji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. That is, they worship Krishna with Anurag, 
love. Their affinity for Krishna, their devotion to Him is not governed by rules. It does not spring from strictly following the scriptural rules, but from bhav, inner inspiration. This worship is called ragmar, the path of spontaneous attraction. Scriptural rules involve calculations of loss and gain. But worship, which is Bhava Samanvita, is not drawn from any consideration of loss and gain. It flows naturally through love and attraction for Krishna. It is Jnana Shurna Bhakti, free from calculation, free from profit and loss. Jnana Karmade Anavratam. The next of the four essential verses which contain the entire message of Bhagavad Gita is as follows. Chapter 10, verse number 9. Machitta madgat prana bodhanta parasparam kathyantascha mamanityam tushyanticha ramanticha The hearts and minds of my devotees are always filled with me. And they are forever experiencing pleasure and ecstasy in talking about me. Here, Krishna says, I am in their hearts, in their thinking, madgat prana. Their whole life, their entire energy is spent for me, utilized for me. Their prana shakti, their life energy is also fully devoted for my cause. I, internally, they are always thinking about me and devoting their whole energy for me. And externally, they talk about me to enhance their mutual understanding. Bodhayanta parasparam. They love to talk about me with one another. They talk about nothing else. In private life and in public life also, they love to talk about me and nothing else. I am the only subject of their discussions. Katyantash chamamanityam tushyanticha ramanticha. Katyantash chamamanityam. Whatever they do, wherever they are, everywhere, I am the subject of their talk. And next Krishna says, In this they find great satisfaction to shun teacher, Raman teacher. The internal message of Tushyanticha Ramanticha is as follows. Here two levels of devotees are described. Up to Vatsalyaras or the parental mellow of devotion, Krishna's devotees are feeling great satisfaction. Tushyanti. And above this, is the higher kind of satisfaction, Ramanti, experienced in the Madhurja Rasa. Just as a wife and husband enjoy a particular kind of connection, Krishna's devotees feel ecstasy, Ramanti, in his connection, simply by talking about him. Here the Acharyas have agreed that the word Ramanti indicates consorthood and that devotees in consorthood can experience the very deep connection of husband and wife in relation to Krishna in the company of Krishna they feel the ecstasy of consorthood Raman teacher they also feel that ecstasy even when they are only talking about Krishna this means 
This meaning of the word Ramanti has been explained in different places by Vishwanath, Baladev, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and is also admitted even by Sankracharya, who agrees that the word Ramanti indicates consorthood. Then there is the next nutshell verse of Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 10, verse number 10. Tesham satati yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadam ibuddhyogam tamyena maam upayantite. To those who constantly worship me with devotion, I give the intelligence by which they can come to me. This is the ordinary meaning of this verse. But there is a deeper meaning. Here Krishna says, those persons who are continuously engaged in me without interruption, satata yuktana, who are always in me, who are connected with me, who serve me with great love and respect with their heart, Dadami buddhyogam tam. I inspire them with the intelligence by which they will come to me. They will come to me in a closer connection. But I found that this is redundant. Krishna has already said, Satati Yukta Naam. Their devotion is continuous. They are always there in my connection. If they are always in connection with Krishna, then we must ask why he would again say, they will come to me. Anilji, do you follow? Just a brief pause. Anilji, do you follow? Yes, sir. I think that's a very valid question to ask, right? If they are already... Right? You agree, right? Yeah, because the... Uh, only those who are just always thinking of me, right? That means they are always so, the same, right? Exactly. And what is how the significance of the second line that it's a deeper meaning we have to understand, right? Hare Krishna. Jaya Param Guru Maharaj. So perfect. Please continue. Uh, we'll study together. Then we must ask why he would say why would why he would again say they will come to me. Krishna has already said that these devotees talk only of him. They think only of him, take pleasure in him, and are always engaged in his service. He says they are always connected with me without interruption, and they are serving me with heartfelt love. They are already serving with heartfelt love. And then Krishna says, I shall give them the inspiration by which they will come to me. This is redundant. It has already been said that they are connected to Krishna. How is it that again they will come to him? How is Krishna's statement, they come to me to be harmonized? So I found a deeper meaning to the words, Mam Upayantite. I took here the word Upayanti, which ordinarily means they come, to indicate Upapati. Or paramar. So upayanti. They come to me means they consider Krishna as upapati. As a paramar. In society there is the lawful husband or pati. And there is the paramar or upapati. In Vrindavan. Krishna is not considered by the gopis as their lawfully married husband. But as master, 
as the Lord of their hearts. Here Krishna says, I inspire those who are constantly engaged in devotional service to come to me. Which devotees does Krishna here inspire? Those who are Ramanti, the highest group of devotees. Those who are related to him in consorthood, in full rasa, mukha rasa. Krishna here says, I inspire them to come to me, considering me as Paramar Upapati. Here Krishna says, Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. This means brain, which is generally found in Madhudjarasa, consorthood. So the real meaning of this verse is that Krishna inspires those who are in consorthood to come to him, see him as Paramar, Upapati. And how do they come to him? He inspires them to come to him without any consideration of social and scriptural demands. And so inspired by him from within, crossing the line of scriptural and social regulations and even deceiving their own husbands, the gopis are united with Krishna in paramour consorthood, paraki. Krishna's position is absolute and he relishes more the devotion of those who can cross everything for him. And he inspires his devotees from within with this message. Externally, you have to fulfill social and scriptural demands. But my position is up over and above the scriptures. My position is above whatever the social laws and scriptural laws tell you to do. I am above the Vedas and everything else. The Vedas are my instructions for the ordinary people. Their instructions are meant for those who are deviated from me. Society is also under the guidance of those instructions which are given to the fallen. But my connection with everything is intrinsic. It is independent of the laws of scripture and society. Param Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Uh, let me read that again. But my connection with everything is intrinsic. It is independent of the laws of scripture in society. I do not require recognition from anyone. My connection with everything is the constant in all equations. It can never be avoided. So you must neglect all the demands from your previous lives connections and come to me. You have no freedom to do anything else. When your devotional nature will come to demand you come to me, you are not free. <laughs> your heart must come towards me. That is Upapati, Paramar devotion. The devotion of Vrindavan, Vrindavan Bhajan, means Paramar devotion. Yena Maam Upayantite. So here Krishna says that to those who are Ramanti, who are already inclined to come in connection with him in consorthood as husband and wife, he gives some special feeling and inspiration from within their hearts. 
and they shall come to him as Upapati, as paramars. Here Krishna is saying, in effect, this paramar devotion is so great that it crosses the rules of both society and scripture. It is independent of everything. Connection with me is independent of everything that you can conceive. It is most innate and natural. It does not require any scriptural or any social sanction. You may live in society showing formal respect to scriptural and social convention. But from your inner heart of hearts, you are mine. That is ye namamapayantite. The special instruction or nature or insight I give to these devotees. Thank you, Abhi. In other words, these devotees do not allow a second pati or husband to come between them and Krishna. They cannot tolerate the inter interpolation of any second thing, even if it involves a social laws or scriptural regulations. Their devotion is so high that all the Vedas are searching after this idea, this divine position. Asamaho charanare nu dusham hamasyam abrindavane kimapi gulm latoshadinam. This is Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, chapter 47, verse number 61. The famous verse by Shuddhava. Although the most exalted devotion of the gopis is only hinted in Hinted at in the Vedas, I can now understand their most exalted position. Oh, when shall I take birth as a creeper in Vrindavan so that I can take the dust of the lotus feet of the gopis upon my head? Those great souls gave up society, friendship, love, their relatives, and even the Vedic principles to take shelter of the holy lotus feet of Krishna. Here, one thing should be mentioned. Parakya Bhav has a broader application. It does not only mean paramour devotion. This feeling of crossing scriptural and social rules for an unsanctioned relationship is found not only in Madhujaras or consorthood. Parakya literally means belonging to another. Brief pause here. Quick trivia. What is the what is the opposite of parakya? Sukhiya. Yes. Jai. Sri Padarun Krishna Prabhu ki jai. <laughs> Can you, can you tell the word again, Arun sir? Swakiya. 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 Your own. Paris. Paris. Parkia literally means belonging to another. Back to Param Guru Maharaj. Parkia literally means belonging to another. Vatsalyaras, parental affection, and sakkaras. Friendship are also infused with the sentiments of Parkia. This is the method of love for those who follow Ragmarg. In the case of Yashoda, Parkia takes the following form. Yashoda says, Some people say that Krishna is not my son. Some people say 
that Krishna is not my son. They say that he is Devaki's son. This feeling enhances her heart's affection towards Krishna. For then she thinks, I could lose him at any moment. This idea draws more intense affection towards Krishna. It increases the affection of her service. Analji, did you follow? Brief, brief pause. So Param Guru Maharaj here is explaining the Parki Abhav. So all the mellows of relationship with the sweet absolute. At this level, it's not just the absolute. Krishna is the sweet absolute. Everything is madhurja. Everything is sweet. Right? So here, did you, uh, did you follow how that parki abhav that Mother Yashoda has for him increases the intensity of her service toward Krishna? That's what Param Guru Maharaj explained. So the feeling summary, what, what it means is that when you have the karki bhav, right, then you are aware that that is something you have to continue doing that uh, service or affection, otherwise you will just do this thing. Right? That's what Maya Shuddha is telling you. Uh, so here her bhav, or the thought that comes to her mind is that she hears this gossip or this talk that people are saying, listen, Krishna is not really Yashoda's son. She's Devaki's son. So you see this, this sudden uh, thought comes to her that he's not mine. That is the telltale sign of that parakiya bhav. Wow. Conversely, he is somebody else. Exactly. So she's she's like so it's like a kind of like a you can say. For her, it's dangerous. Like, is he my son or not? And because of that feeling, even more attraction. It's more attraction, and Krishna relishes it more. And when he relishes it more, then um, the devotees relish it more. But that bhav is peculiar to Vrindavan. And it's called Parkia. So in Batsalya also, Param Guru Maharaj is how clearly he is giving an example and he is explaining with such clarity. Yes, Arun Prabhu, please. Prabhu, um, at least being born in a family where we have my mother, my parents, and others have used the word Ram. Ram Jana, uh, since childhood, I personally am, am incapable of finding an equivalent word in English. Ramanti, and the, and that's where it comes from. It is so hard to explain in words in English. It can be only understood in my view, in, in, its, in its original form. Um, at least people who are born in that uh, language system. It is so deep and it is some, something like one is mingling into the other substance, that is Ramya. Ramanti. That is what is the uh, advantage of all this reading together, right? You can get into more detail, otherwise the literal meaning of, you can just say it's just Ramanti means a blending, right? Just blend together, right? That is very literal translation. Mm -hmm. And even that will not be understood. I mean, look at, look at the depth that Srila Param Gurudev is bringing these the meanings out, Vajagar Karna. It's, it's there, it's just that it shines now in your eyes. <laughs> and also, if you look a little more, uh, 
with a little more attention, you will see that he is, Param Guru Maharaj is also revealing uh, the dynamism within Vrindavan. If you, if you carefully try and see, then like in Vatsalya, till Vatsalya he has, he has shown Tushanti, they're tushed, they're satisfied, that satisfaction is there. And then Namanti, so, so there is this natural movement for closer and closer intimacy, more intimacy with the environment which is, who is Krishna? More and more intimacy. That is the entire movement managed by Yogamaya. All harmonious. Huh? Leela. He is giving insight into Leela. People get stuck with the mass of light which is like the Brahman conception, which is where, which is like the all-comprehensive aspect of the Absolute. And then some jnanis, just some jnanis, some Vedantists are able to accommodate conception of personality with consciousness, then they come up to the level of Paramatma. Then they can come to the level of uh, super subjectivity. Because till Brahman, they are not able to comprehend or make that connection. Param Guru Maharaj explains how beautifully he explains, I'll just repeat it, is in that verse. Bahunam janmanam ante jnanavanamama prapadyate vasudeva sarvamiti vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudurlava. So the ordinary meaning we all know. But he's talking specifically, he says, he mentions he's talking about the jnanis from the jnani section, from the Vedantist section, who are just attached to the impersonal absolute, the mass of light. When they become to understand that there is this all permeating aspect, the master consciousness, and that is Vasudev. Huh? That is very rare. When they are able to focus enough the eyes in the subjective realm is able to focus to the level of being able to notice the all permeating master consciousness among conscious all conscious that is the point of Vasudeva Sarvamiti now they have uh, come to this level of accommodating consciousness with personality then further development Further development. Fifth dimension. Vrindavan. Now the absolute is sweet absolute. Everything is sweet. All movement is sweet. So he's explaining. And then those relationships, those mellows, within those mellows, how the dynamism is happening is explained here. That is the level of revelation that is being brought to us. Namaskar Priti, welcome. And uh, I see Nandarani Didi is also here. Namaskar, Dandavat Pranam, Nandarani Didi. Dandavat Sarivam, Dandavat. Hare Krishna. So like we are discussing amongst ourselves, we are trying to follow Gurudev, Param Guru Maharaj and our guardians. 
like uh, this uh, sangha is possible is made possible by the orders of uh, Srila Bhakti Pavan Janardhan Maharaj who is our affectionate guardian without his sanction this would be like some independent personal aspiration of maybe one or two or ten devotees that that is not good So we are trying to follow that so we can someday reach that level, bodhinta parasparam. At least I can with you folks. <laughs> okay. Avadi. So we, we go on. Avadi, may I want to do a process check? Oh. <laughs> Hare Krishna, time really flies. I didn't notice. Hare Evo. I'm going to uh, round up the uh, elite Kirtan team uh, group, EKG, and we'll be back. Give me, give me two minutes. Thank you, Arun Prabhu, for keeping it real. We are walking towards reality, the beautiful. We need to be real. I need to be real. Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. I'll bring you back to the material time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. You're, you're too kind. Dandot Pranam, many, many Dandot Pranam at your lotus feet. Give me a second, please. This one.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे निताय गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल निताय गौरा हरि बोल जय जय गुरुदेव 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 जय जय गुरुदेव जय 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 ओके अनेका जी प्लीज टेक इट अवे
हरी हरी बोल जय शियानिका शियानिका जी प्रीति जी एंड विक्रम जी की जाए और डिवाइन पैनलिस्ट श्रीपाद अरुण कृष्ण प्रभु एंड चिन्मय देव प्रभु की जाए जाए और अनिल जी की जाए नंदरानी दीदी की जाए एलिट कीर्तन थीम की जाए आबा जी की जाए जय शिला भक्ति पावन जय राम प्रभु की जय जय शिला शिला भक्ति पावन जनार्दन महाराज की जाए जय शिला भक्ति निर्मल आचार्य महाराज की जाए शिला विश्वरेण्या शिला ए सी भक्ति उदान स्वामी प्रभुपात की जाए नित्य गौर प्रेमानंदे हरी हरी बोल